This is a recording of the Wikipedia article titled Chosen Plain Text Attack as of December 27, 2023. Chosen Plain Text Attack. A chosen plain text attack, abbreviated CPA, is an attack model for cryptanalysis which presumes that the attacker can obtain the ciphertexts for arbitrary plain texts. The goal of the attack is to gain information that reduces the security of the encryption scheme. Modern ciphers aim to provide semantic security, also known as ciphertext indistinguishability under the chosen plaintext attack, and they are therefore, by design, generally immune to chosen plaintext attacks if correctly implemented. The first section is titled Introduction. In a chosen plaintext attack, the adversary can, possibly adaptively, ask for the ciphertext of arbitrary plaintext messages. This is formalized by allowing the adversary to interact with an encryption oracle viewed as a black box. The attacker's goal is to reveal all or a part of the secret encryption key. It may seem infeasible in practice that an attacker could obtain ciphertexts for given plaintexts. However, modern cryptography is implemented in software or hardware and is used for a diverse range of applications. For many cases, a chosen plaintext attack is often very feasible. See also the Wikipedia article in practice. Chosen plaintext attacks become extremely important in the context of public key cryptography where the encryption key is public and so attackers can encrypt any plaintext they choose. The next section is titled Different Forms. There are two forms of chosen plaintext attacks. The first is called Batch Chosen Plaintext Attack, where the adversary chooses all of the plaintext before seeing any of the corresponding ciphertexts. This is often the meaning intended by chosen plaintext attack when this is not qualified. The second is adaptive chosen plaintext attack, abbreviated CPA2, where the adversary can request the ciphertext of additional plaintext after seeing the ciphertext for some plaintexts. The next section is titled, General Method of an Attack. A general batch chosen plaintext attack is carried out as follows. 1. The attacker may choose n plaintexts. This parameter n is specified as part of the attack model. It may or may not be bounded. 2. The attacker then sends these n plaintexts to an, the encryption oracle. 3. The encryption oracle will then encrypt the attacker's plaintexts and send them back to the attacker. 4. The attacker receives n ciphertexts back from the oracle in such a way that the attacker knows which ciphertext corresponds to each plaintext. 5. Based on the plaintext ciphertext pairs, the attacker can attempt to extract the key used by the oracle to encode the plaintexts. Since the attacker in this type of attack is free to craft the plaintext to match his needs, the attack complexity may be reduced. Consider the following extension of the above situation. After the last step, 1. The, M, the adversary outputs two plaintexts, M0 and M1. 2. A bit B is chosen uniformly at random. B is composed of 0, 1. 3. The adversary receives the encryption of M sub B and attempts to guess which plaintext it received and outputs a bit B prime. A cipher has indistinguishable encryptions under a chosen plaintext attack if, after running the above experiment with N equals 1, the adversary can't guess correctly B equals B prime with probability non-negligibly better than one half. The next section is titled Examples. 
The following examples demonstrate how ciphers that meet other security definitions may be broken with the chosen plaintext attack. Caesar cipher. The following attack on the Caesar, Caesar, Caesar cipher allows full recovery of the secret key. 1. Suppose the adversary sends the message, attack at dawn. 2. The oracle returns, nggnpx space ng space qnja period. 3. The adversary can then work through to recover the key in the same way as a Caesar cipher. The adversary could deduce the substitutions A for N, T for G, and so on. This would lead the adversary to determine that 13 was the key used in the Caesar cipher. With more intricate or complex encryption methodologies, the decryption method becomes more resource intensive. However, the core concept is still relatively the same. Second example, one-time pads. The following attack on a one-time pad allows full recovery of the secret key. Suppose the message length and key length are equal to n. 1. The adversary sends a string consisting of n zeros to the oracle. 2. The oracle returns the bitwise exclusive OR of the key with a string of zeros. 3. The string returned by the oracle is the secret key. While the one-time pad is used as an example of an information theory theoretically secure crypto system, this security only holds under the security definitions weaker than CPA security. This is because under the formal definition of CPA security, the encryption oracle has no state. This vulnerability may not be applicable to all practical implementations. The one-time pad can still be made secure if key reuse is avoided. Hence the name, One Time Pad. The next section is titled, In Practice. In World War II, U.S. Navy cryptanalysis, cryptanalysis discovered that Japan was planning to attack a location referred to as, quote, AF, unquote. They believed that AF might be Midway Island because other locations in the Hawaiian Islands had code words that began with A. To prove their hypothesis that AF corresponded to Midway Island, they asked the U.S. forces at Midway to send a plain text message about low supplies. The Japanese intercepted the message and immediately reported to their superiors that AF was low on water, confirming the Navy's hypothesis and allowing them to position their force to win the battle. Also during World War II, Allied codebreakers at Bletchley Park would sometimes ask the Royal Air Force to lay mines at a position that didn't have any abbreviations or alternatives in the German Naval Systems Grid reference. The hope was that the Germans, seeing the mines, would use an Enigma machine to encrypt a warning message about the mines and an all-clear message after they were removed, giving the Allies enough information about the message to break the German Naval Enigma. This process of planting a known plain text was called gardening. Allied codebreakers also helped craft messages sent by double agent Juan Pujol Garcia, who encrypted radio reports, were received in Madrid, manually decrypted, and then re-encrypted with an Enigma machine for transmission to Berlin. This helped the codebreakers decrypt the code used on the second leg, having supplied the original text. In modern day, chosen plain text attacks, or CPAs, are often used to break symmetric ciphers. To be considered CPA secure, the symmetric cipher must not be vulnerable to chosen plain text attacks. Thus, it is important for symmetric cipher implementers to understand how an attacker would attempt to break their cipher and make relevant improvements. For some chosen plain text attacks, only a small part of the plaintext may need to be chosen by the attacker. Such attacks are known as plaintext injection attacks. The next section is titled Relation to Other Attacks. A chosen plaintext attack is more powerful than known plaintext attack because the attacker can directly target specific terms or patterns without having to wait for their, these to appear naturally 
allowing faster gathering of data relevant to cryptanalysis. Therefore, any cipher that prevents chosen plaintext attacks is also secure against known plaintext and ciphertext only attacks. However, a chosen plaintext attack is less powerful than a chosen ciphertext attack, where the attacker can obtain the plaintexts of arbitrary ciphertexts. A CCA attacker can sometimes break a CPA secure system. For example, the El Hamal cipher is secure against chosen plaintext attacks, but vulnerable to chosen ciphertext attacks because it is unconditionally malleable. This is the end of the article. This recording is released to public domain.